Hi guys. Hello. Um, my name is uh, Jonathan, and I'm going to talk to you today about a mission to the moon, Israel's mission to the moon. Um, has anyone heard about Space IL? Raise your hand. Did you hear about Space IL before? Yes. Okay. Some people heard about it. So uh, Space IL uh, was started by myself and two friends about almost 10 years ago. And I wanted to talk to you about the story about how the spaceship got to the moon. But first, I'll tell you a little bit about what I did when I was your age. When I was about your age, I, was lo I loved Legos. Does anyone of you play with Legos? You, anyone here plays with Legos, love Legos? Yeah, so I love Legos, and I actually have one of the kits that I recently got for my birthday. You can see this is a little astronauts here, and this is a, a kit that uh, you can rove in, on Mars or something like that, so that's one, one of my favorites. And Legos is, are, were my favorite, and building Legos was uh, what I wanted to do. And to me, building a rocket ship or a robot that goes to the moon is the ultimate challenge. Uh, I will say that there is a Space IL Lego that uh, we're trying to vote that it would be uh, uh, available in the Lego. So if you search or you have your parents search for uh, Space IL Lego, go vote for that model so that we can all enjoy a Lego spaceship uh, of Bereshit. This is the uh, spaceship that uh, my friends and I, uh, we built. This was launched out of Israel. It's uh, about the size of a coffee table you have in your home. And it got to the moon about a year ago. And you can see all the different parts of the spaceships. Let me just point out a few that are very important parts. Do you know what this is? This is what these are, those big, big spheres. These are the fuel tanks of the spaceship. They are the things that provide fuel so the spaceship can go all the way to the moon. The moon is very, very far. You need some fuel, fuel tanks to contain fuel to do that. We have some legs. The spaceship needs some legs so it can softly land on the surface of the moon. Let me do a demonstration here. Does anyone have like a, like a pillow or a ball that they can have nearby? Does you have any of those? Let's do an experiment together. So I have this ball, this moon rock, and I'm gonna drop it. And I wanna pay close attention of how long does it take to drop to, uh, to my lap here. So let's do an experiment. One, two, three, drop. Did you see that? It was really, really fast. How do you think it would be faster or slower when I will drop this ball on the moon? Do you think it will be faster to drop or slower to drop? Who says faster? Raise your hand. Who says it's going to be faster? Who says it's going to be slower? Well, yeah, it's going to be actually slower because the moon has much weaker gravity than here on Earth. So balls don't fall as fast and, and pillows don't fall as, as fast on the moon. So this is why we were able to use this spaceship with relatively small rocket engines to land on the moon. You can see this is a picture from the launch itself. There was a beautiful night and we saw the rocket going up into the sky and it is crossing over the horizon. We saw the moon come up. So it was a beautiful, beautiful day. We could see the rocket itself. This is a picture that we took uh, of, the of Earth from the spaceship. You can see the Israeli flag here. And we were very happy about uh, the fact that this picture could see Earth and the Israel flag, and also this is the leg of the spaceship. You can see it. this is one of the landing legs that used to touch down on the surface of the moon. We took also a picture of Israel. Can you see Israel here in this, in this uh, picture? Can you see Israel? Well, it's a bit cloudy, but you can see it's just behind the clouds over here. It was a cloudy day, unfortunately, but we had a lot of fun. Another thing, another picture that we took is a picture of the moon. This is the moon itself. This is the side that we don't see from Earth. This is the other side of the moon, the side that is behind that we never see it, but the spaceship was able to uh, take a picture of the moon. Do you guys want to draw a spaceship with me? Do you have uh, your pens? Do you have your pens and, uh, and paper with you guys? Let's, uh, let's draw a spaceship together. So the first thing we need to draw is the spaceships. Um, let me think. The first thing we need to draw is the spaceship's body, the main body of, of the spaceship itself. So let's start by drawing the body of the spaceship. It's like a rectangular. So let's do it together. 
let's do uh, the body of the spaceship. It's a rectangle like this. Can you draw this? And if you did the rectangle or the main body of the spaceship, I think the next part we should draw together are the legs because the spaceship needs legs so it can land on the moon. So let's draw some, some legs for the spaceship. So we need our spaceship, uh, Bereshit, has four legs. You see one, two, three, and four legs. The spaceship has four legs, so it will be stable on the moon. So let's draw four legs to the spaceship. You see this is the four legs of the spaceship. And we obviously need one more thing. We need the rocket engine, right? The rocket engine at the bottom of the spaceship. We have to have the rocket engine that shoots fire. This is the thing that the, the mission, the, sp the spacecraft uses uh, to, uh, to land. So let's draw a rocket engine. I have a red marker here if you have for the, for the fire itself. So let's try to do that. And usually spaceships have more than one engine just because you want either backup or you want to have some engines to help you steer the spaceship around if you need to fly in different directions. So usually we have more than one engine. So I'm going to draw uh, three engines here. Do you want to show up some of your drawings so we can see? Let's see. I'm going to draw some engines for the rocket ship. Let's see if uh, people are showing me some of their stickers or their rockets. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, you, oh, wow. That's a beautiful engine. Yeah. There you go. Okay. One more thing that we want to put on the spaceship is we want to take some, some scientific experiment, some science, because we go all the way to the moon, right? We want to put on the spaceship, we want to put some scientific experiments. So if you have stickers for that, you can put some stickers. I have uh, a sticker here. Let's see. I have a sticker. You see, I have got, got some stickers of science experiments. So I'm going to take one of those stickers and put some science experiments on the spaceship because we want to get, we got all the way to the moon. We might as well do some science. So I'll put some science on the spaceship. Obviously, we need to have some stars around because it's in space, so we need some stars. Let's see if we can put some star stickers so you can draw some stars yourselves. This is one. Some more stars over here. Can you show me how you're doing here? Well, up to the camera. Let's see what you got there. Oh, I see Jeremy is beautiful drawing there. Ezra, I see that you're also working very hard here. Okay. Wow, that's a beautiful, Aviv. That's a beautiful drawing you got there with the Israeli flag. One more thing that we need to make sure that we have on the spaceship, you know, this is a spaceship that needs power, like electricity, so it can function well. And we don't have a power outlet in space. We need to generate the power for the spaceship. And we're going to do that using solar panels. So the spaceship has solar panels. Let me show you here on the model of the spacecraft. If you see them on the top of the spaceship, we have two solar panels here. These things look towards the sun. We have another big one up at the top, but we can draw it from here. We have a big solar panel over here, and this is facing the sun, and we can use the energy from the sun to draw power for the spaceship so it can function. It's kind of similar to what would a tree do. Right? The trees also take um, uh, the trees also take powers from the sun and convert it to energy for the tree. So let's draw solar panels. Usually solar panels are in blue, so I'm going to take a blue marker over here and draw some solar panels on top of the spaceship. Let's see. They're basically a square, like a blue square on top of the spaceship.
You see that? You guys want to show me? Oh, my God, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay, one more thing that we need to put here, obviously, is the Israeli flag. Can you all draw the Israeli flag? Now, I like to draw the Israeli flag next to it because it's like we land on the moon, we need a flag next to it. Although in reality, the flag was on the spaceship itself. The flag was not on the moon, it was on the spaceship. We didn't put it aside, but I'll draw it like this anyways. So we need to draw the ground, the moon, and then we'll draw the Israeli flag next to it. Again, Israeli flag, we need blue and white. And of course, once we draw the Israeli flag, can you show it up? If you have a sticker, by the way, it's even better to put a sticker. Oh, wow, that's really colorful, Maya. Shira, oh, wow, that's a lot of stars on it. The one, one last thing we want to draw now is what we would take with us. What do you think that you would want to take with you to the moon if you had if you were left tomorrow you want to go to the moon what what is the one thing that you would take with you you want to take a book do you want to take your favorite teddy bear yeah Ella, i see that you're raising your hand what are you can you can we unmute uh Ella so she can say go ahead we can hear you um I take a very good book and a lot of food because I'll take about a, um, a, a month to get to the moon. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. The journey to the moon can take a very long time, so you might want to have a book. You know that NASA astronauts, though, it only took them three days because their rocket ship was flying very, very fast. So it took only three days for the astronauts to go to the moon. But for our spaceship, it's true, we took a very much longer journey to go to the moon. So we took a, a, almost two months to get there. You know what I'll take? I'll think I'll take, first of all, I need to take my glasses. Otherwise I won't be able to see. So I need to take my glasses. So let me put a sticker for the glasses. And obviously I would wanna take uh, like um, a telescope so I can look back at home and say hi to all the people. And I also want to take a robot with me because it's probably going to be a lot of work to do all the work by myself. So I want to have a robot with me to uh, help me out there. So I'm going to put a sticker of the robot there. Let's see, there's a questions, some questions. We can take a few questions from the crowd here. Can you see the stickers that I put in here? By the way, guys, you can feel free to write in the chat. I can answer some of the questions. And uh, we have some friends from the IAC here that can also help you out uh, by unmuting you so you can ask questions. And I think that Sophie has a really, really important question. Also Mayan. And Aviv, oh, wow, we have a lot of questions here. Um, I can hear you, Mayan. If I was an astronaut, I would take a helmet to the moon because in the moon there's no air. That's really good. We, yeah, we have to take a helmet uh, with us so we can have oxygen. But if you are, um, if you're sending a robot, then you don't need the air because robots don't need air, right? Only if you need to send people. You know, there was a big effort way, way long ago of astronauts going to the moon. Did you hear about that? The Apollo astronauts that they want to go to the moon as well. And let me share you a story that is actually really interesting. Um, you know, we are all in quarantine right now because of the coronavirus, right? But did you know that astronauts also had to be in quarantine before they can go to the moon? Let me show you. 
me show you uh, what I mean. Um, so you can see here in this picture, this is the astronauts of Apollo 11. These were the first astronauts to go on the moon. And you can see they're sitting in the room reading a book or a paper and just, uh, just waiting. They had to be quarantined so that they won't be sick in space because you don't know if they have uh, viruses here on the moon, uh, here on Earth, that they would take to the moon and they would be sick along the way. And did you know that it actually happened once? The astronauts of Apollo 7, they didn't go to quarantine. They went straight to the rocket and went into space. And in space, they discovered that they were sick. They actually had the flu, which was a big problem because they ran out of tissues and we couldn't send any tissues for them. So NASA had to work really hard to make sure that they're safe and they will be back on Earth soon so that we won't have any problem uh, of them getting too sick because they ran out of medicine and tissue. So that was really, really important. We can take some more questions, guys, if you want. I'm not sure who's in control of the muting. Oh, I see Gabrielle is asking if there is, uh, in the spaceship, is there a bed and a window? So there is for the ones that went to the moon with people, but um, in our spaceship, that was only a robot. So the robots don't need bed and windows. They just, uh, the, the entire spaceship was just one thing, just the robot itself. Let's see, do we have any more questions here? I see Yael is raise her hand. Can we give permission to Yael to speak? Um, where do you live? I live in California. So how did you do the, the thing? Did you work on the spaceship for Israel or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, so I, when I was working on the spaceship, I lived in Israel and I moved recently to California to go to do a, P, a PhD, a doctorate at Stanford. So I'm now in school, back in school. Okay. Cool, Maya asked the question. How did they build the rocket ship? Well, we had a lot of, uh, I, a lot of friends helping us out. There was a big team in Israel of engineers that this is, was their job. They were actually building the rocket. We built it in a company that's called Israel Aerospace Industries, which is a long name, but this company has all the tools and all the special tools that is, are needed to build a rocket ship to send to the moon. And they help us out a lot actually uh, in building the spaceship. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So the uh, question is, have they built Barrichet 2 yet? What is building Barrichet 2? No, we, have, we haven't uh, built Barrichet number 2 yet. We're still thinking about what it is that we want to do for Barrichet number 2. We think that we don't want to do the same thing exactly because we kind of did it maybe. We're thinking about doing something that is the next level. And actually, I would like to have your help here. We're thinking about some ideas of things that we would want to take uh, for bear sheet number two. And there are a lot of options, and we're thinking about a lot of things. But one of the things that we're considering is, you know, a lot of, a lot of countries want to go to the moon and bring astronauts to, to the moon, right? And one of the things that these astronauts are going to need is food, right? How would you grow food on the moon? So I, I prepared here a little experiment. Those of you who have cups with them might want to pull them up. So one of the interesting things is that you can actually see what plants are, might be better to grow on the moon or what conditions do they need to, to grow uh, plants on the surface of the moon. So I have this cup here with me. Do you have a cup as well? You guys have a cup? So first of all, this is an experiment, so I need to put some stickers on it. So let me put again the, the sticker of the experiment that I have here. 
let's put some stickers on the cup itself. Um, can you see that? Can you see this? It's the science experiment that I brought here. Let's see if I can uh, put, uh, obviously I need another robot here. Let's see if I can find another robot that will help me with the experiment. An alien robot here. And I already have uh, the Star of David, a David shield on it. And you can put some water in your cup and ask uh, one of your parents or an adult to cut up a scallion. This actually also works with potatoes uh, and beets if you have them. And you know, this scallion, I cut it up and I only have just a little bit of it sticking out in green. And I can put this scallion in the cup and see if it grows, right? Now scallions are very interesting because they are very easy to grow. And they actually have a lot of usage for food and for spices, for, for example, which is very nice because astronauts need something good to eat. But what, where do you think I should put this scallion so it would grow best? Should I put it in a dark area or an area that is visible by the sun? What do you think? Who says I should put it in a dark area? Who thinks I should put it next to the sun, facing the sun? I think, I think we need some, some space that is more towards the light, right? But we might not want to do too much light, right? We want to do some a moderate amount of light. And here, this is where experiments come into play. What I can do is I can measure. I have a measuring tape here, a ruler. Let's see where it is, where I left it off. Hold on. I have a ruler with me. There you go. And I can measure how, what is the length of the scallion right now. Can you see it? It's about, I think, about two inches, right? About two inches. So what I can do is I can try to put it in a specific spot in my house. Can you see that there is a, I have a window just behind me. So I can try to put it next to the window and measure it, let's say, and right before Shabbat. So in two days from now, and let's see, how, how, how long did the scallion grow from that point? If it's a little shy of two inches right now, let's see how far it grows within a couple of days. And then we can compare, right? We can compare if it's next to the sun here, and we can compare it uh, to, uh, to other place in the house. And this is actually very important information because if we want to send something like that to the moon, we would like to have the optimal conditions for it to grow. So let me just, take it and put it uh, next to the sun here. And then in a few days, I can change the spot and I can measure it again and see how much it grew. Hold on one second. You can do it with me if you have it already. Please do that. Yeah, I think here is a great spot to start. And let's see. I'll let you know how much this one grew. We have two inches and let's see how far it goes. Let's, uh, let's have a little more, uh, a few more questions. If you have, please raise your hand and, uh, or write in the chat and I'll try to answer that. Um, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. How did the, um, how did the, how how astronauts um get how did the astronauts get to space if they if they didn't have any um helmets or their suits for space so you have to have helmets or suits because it's going to be very dangerous if you're not space is a really risky place you need to have the proper protection like you know when you go out now and uh, you are wandering around the world, we have to wear masks, right? This is our protection. We, have, we cannot just go out, we need to wear the mask. Astronauts have to wear helmets to protect them from the environment of space. Yeah, Sophie. What happens if the seat gets broken on the way? Can you repeat that, sorry? What? What happens if the ship gets broken on, uh, on the way? Oh, that's a great question. What happens if the spaceship breaks along the way? So 
you'll be surprised, but a lot of times, and this happens to our spaceship a lot, it's not really breaks, but it, it's kind of get stuck. You know, like when you're, in your, when you're playing on your phone and all of a sudden it's stuck and you need to restart it and you need to kind of see if it, why the game stopped or something like that. Did it happen to you ever? So this thing happened to the spaceship quite, quite a few times. We had to figure out what is wrong with it and try to fix it. And we have a big team in Israel that was actually, this was their job. They, they were looking at the spaceship, all, all the information that they came, on the pictures and in the other information that came and they tried to fix it while it was on, along on its way to the moon. So we couldn't fix everything and eventually the spaceship landed on the moon in just too many pieces. We have to do it again and try it next time in one piece, not in too many pieces. Um, and um, so yes, yeah, so we had people in, like engineers that were working to fix the spaceship as it was in space. But you're right, it's a big problem. Yeah. Um, so you know how um, for astronauts to go to the moon, like to stand on it, they need to have helmets? Can you repeat that, sorry? Um, for astronauts to go to the moon, they need to have helmets. Yeah. So is there like a limit they need to be there? Like an hour and then they have to come in because it won't be safe if they stay out too? Yeah, that's a great question. So first of all, yeah, there is a limit. They cannot stay there forever. One of the, one of the problems of uh, going to the moon um, with, for example, if you don't take your food, you might run out of food at some point. It's like going on camping. You need to prepare and have enough food for you or the way there and the way back, and it takes three days there and three days back. So you need to make sure that you have enough food, you have enough water, you have enough oxygen, and all these things you need to take care of before you actually go on a journey to the moon to make sure that you have enough to, to come back. Because if you get stuck, um, it takes a long time to get someone to rescue there, you from there. So uh, I think this is the, the biggest problem. There's also other problems that you need to make sure that you are that limits your time, but I think these are the main ones. Why we cannot go forever, because we need oxygen and water and food, and this comes from Earth. Until, if this experiment grows, if this experiment succeeds, we might be able to take our own food there. Yeah, I see some questions from Hila. We can hear you, Hila. What happens if you get a leak in the spaceship and then you run out of fuel. What happens if you get a leak in the spaceship and you run out of fuel? So I think first thing you need to do is you need to fix it. Um, so you can actually do a lot of things to fix the leak because often we take extra. We take extra, su extra supply so that we can make sure that we can go back home if we need or in case of the spaceship that it could land on the surface of the moon. So if you fix it right away, you're probably in good shape. But if you're taking too long to fix it, then you might be in a problem and you need to come back home quickly. But again, for our spaceship, because it was a robot, there was no person on the spaceship. So that was not as risky as if there was a person there. And then we had to do a lot more work to do that. I think, Shira, you're... you're uh, we can hear you. Did you want to ask? Can hear you, Shira? Hi, Shira. We can hear you. Can you can when, you hear us? When are you gonna? When is the next one gonna land? That's a great question. So this is one of the things that uh, we are working on to try to figure out is what is going to be the next mission and when it's going to happen. But we don't know yet. We're working on it. Ask, I brought a jar because it says so. 
So um, when are we going to use the jar? Great question. So if you open your jar there and you can put stickers around it, you can ask your parents if they have scallions or potatoes that you can put and try to grow scallions or potatoes in your house, in your own room, to see what conditions are optimal for growing them, right? So we can try to do the same thing uh, when we, if we go this, to space, we want to know what plants can we grow and whether or not we can eat them. So we can use the, the scallions or potatoes or beets and put them in different places in the room to see where do they grow best. And I think that's an experiment that you can do yourself in your home. Uh, you just need a help from an adult. Guys, you can also write questions in the in the chat. I can read them and uh, and uh, answer them if you can type them in or ask your parents to type them for you. Yeah, Tamar. Um, how did, um, you can ask it in Hebrew. How did the spaceship uh, broke apart? Well, we were too fast in getting to the moon. We had a malfunction uh, that eventually led to the fact that we were going down too fast. And what happens when you go down too fast? You might hurt yourself, right? And this is exactly what happened to the spaceship. We just, we just went too fast towards the surface of the moon. And this is why the spaceship broke apart. But don't be sad. We just we got really good pictures. Oh, I see that you have the Bereshit book. That's a really cool book. I like that book a lot. I see a question from Maya about how big was the robot. So the robot was about the size of a table. Um, so about this big. Let's see more question. How much did it weigh? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, so the spaceship, I think, was about a thousand pounds, if I recall correctly, but I can, I, yeah, about a thousand pounds. So about the size of um, of a small car. So it's pretty heavy to go. But you remember the gravity on the moon is weaker, so it wasn't as heavy there. So I see a, a, a question. If an astronaut accidentally gets detached from a spaceship, what would be the safety orientation in order to find its way back to the ship? That's actually a really good question. And I know that NASA usually uses like very thin uh, uh, wire that is attached to the spaceship, to, to, between the spaceship and the astronaut. So they can find their way back using that wire. They just need to hold on to it and come back. Uh, they might have more sophisticated uh, methods right now to do that. But astronauts, they never go too far. Um, so they can always find their way back. Gabriel asks uh, if I have a robot. Um, I have a little Roomba. Is that considered a robot? Yeah, Ella. Oh, it's here. Um, how does the spaceship blast off? How does the spaceship blast off? It has rocket engines at the bottom of it has rocket engines that shoot hot, hot gases. Like It looks like a fire, almost. It shoots hot gases at the bottom, and this is how it pushes itself forward in space and onto the moon. Where can you buy this various sheet models? Um, so I think if you go on our website, spaceil.com, we actually have not this one, but another one that you can print and you can cut 
and then you can blue and you can make uh, your own model of the spaceship. Uh, that's free on this website on spaceil.com. There's a kid section. It has a lot of fun things to draw and to paint and to we can we can glue and make some fun things with the moon. I have um can, can I tell you a joke? Sure. What do you what is an astronaut's favorite drink? What? Gravity. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, I see my aunt has a jar there. Oh, you have a sticker there. Yeah, that there you go. That's perfect. Oh, you put the spaceship in it. That's really creative. Okay, there's another question. How many people were on the team who built Bereshit? So actually, fewer people than you think. Um, there was about 40 or 50 people that actually worked on building the spaceship. And uh, it was a very small team. We actually fit everybody in one room and take a group picture. And uh, this is really unique because other, other uh, spaceships that were built takes usually thousands and thousands of engineers. So having only uh, a couple of dozen is actually really, really unique. Shira Baror has a question. Hey, what, what's up? Um, but how did you guys feel? Were you disappointed? Were you feeling proud? How did you feel? How do you feel now? Um, so, First of all, I gotta say that it is disappointing, right? Because you worked on this spaceship for so long and so many people have worked on the spaceship and, and eventually it, we hoped that it would land in one piece and safely. But I gotta tell you, I think it was also, it was a great, great achievement because no small country got to the moon like that, ever. Bereshit was the first private, spaceship that came from Israel and we got all the way to the moon. I was a little worried that kids would think that, you know, we went all the way there and they will be a little disappointed. Were you guys disappointed what happened with the bear sheet? A little bit, yeah. So this was one of the things that we were worried about, how, how kids would look at it. And we were very happy because we got a lot of drawings from a lot of kids from all around the world, drawing the spaceship and, and, uh, and they were really excited about it. So. Hopefully, you guys, you know, I put, there is a letter that I put on the spaceship. And if one of you guys can build a rocket ship to go there and bring it back for me, I'll really appreciate it. All right, I think we have time for a few more questions. Um, I have a question. How many, um, like, how many people that um, like made this spaceship and um, how much time did, did, they, did it take to get to um, the moon? So about uh, 50 people, 40 to 50 people were working on making the spaceship. And how long it take to the moon? So for us, it took a, about two months to get there but we took a very roundabout way because we wanted to conserve fuel and we wanted to make sure that we get there uh, uh, in one piece. The astronauts, on the other hand, were taking much faster. They took a direct route. It's called the direct trajectory. And instead of two months, do you know how long it took for them to get there? Only three days, three days. And that's the fact, they flew the fastest they could to get to the moon and then fast as they could to get back. How did you come about to work on it? Uh, what did you study? So I actually studied engineering, electrical engineering, uh, but I was fascinated with space ever since I was a kid, uh, about your age. As I mentioned, I was, was building those uh, Lego models of spaceships and, and in, in high school, 
there was a, a program that allowed high school students to take part in building uh, a, sp a spaceship or uh, a small satellite about, about this big. The size of the satellite was about this big. It's called a nano satellite. Today, you can actually make a lot of them. And uh, in school, I was part of a team that actually built the first Israeli nano satellite, and uh, it eventually got launched to space. So I got to work on it by being in high school, and that was really a lot of fun. And from there, I worked as a satellite engineer, and I continued uh, working in that field until uh, one day I met with two of my friends, uh, Yariv and Kfir, and we decided, yeah, we're gonna go for the moon and we're gonna join this competition. And we were joined by a lot of engineers from Israel, a lot of uh, uh, supporters, and eventually we got to the moon. How much time did it take to build the robot? So um, about 10 years from the time that we first started about uh, thinking about the spaceship itself and building the robot until we finished the construction of the robot. It was about 10 years. You gotta remember that the actual construction, actually putting the bolts and nuts together, that part can sometimes be very, very fast, but because it's over there so far away and we cannot fix it once it leaves Earth, we sometimes have to think very hard about what we want to do and how it's all gonna connect before we even start it. This is why it takes so long. Tamar wants to know if kids can work with you uh, on the next spaceship. Would you guys like to work with us on the next spaceship? Yeah. So it's very important that you would go to school to, sci to study sciences, if your school offers sciences, because science is very, very important and it would help you a lot in building your own rocket ships one day. So if you guys wanna participate, I need you to get start uh, learning sciences in school because uh, we're going to need you guys to help us out with the next missions. Aviv asks, how did we come up with the name Bereshit? So to answer that question, actually, we didn't. We asked uh, people from Israel and all around the world to suggest names, and that was the name that was suggested. So uh, that was the name with the most votes, and this is why it was selected to be the name of the space shop Bereshit, which I got to admit, I love that name. It's a really cool name. Any more questions, guys? Mayan is making a globe. Great. Yeah, Hila. What if they needed to, to go to the bathroom? What would they do? They need to go to the bathroom. They have a special space bathrooms. And NASA actually have a great video about that. So you can go on YouTube and search for NASA space bathroom. This is actually a really, really important question. Ella says that Bamidbar is also a good name because the moon is actually a big desert. That's, uh, that's actually interesting. So you know that uh, um, the first two people that went on the moon is uh, Neil Armstrong, and then right after him, it was Buzz Aldrin. And his first words of Buzz Aldrin, the second guy to walk on the moon, uh, was magnificent, magnificent desolation. So he was actually uh, sharing that, that it's a beautiful desert. So great quote, Ella. Jonathan, should we take one last question? Okay, yeah, you pick. Um, um, how many days did it take to build the rocket ship? So from start to finish, about, about 10 days, about 10 years, sorry, about 10 years to build the rocket ship. And also, um, um, do you need to take a tour around the rocket ship first? Because what if you don't know where the engine is or where the bathroom is? Oh, that's a great point. Yeah. 
they have a lot of training to make sure not only that they know where the engine and where the bathroom are, but also how can they fix things if they go wrong because the astronauts have to know it. They actually have a long, long training period where they have to learn all the buttons. They have, the spaceship says a lot of buttons. They have to know exactly which button does what. So it takes a long time, a lot of training to become an astronaut. But how do they Sorry? But how do they know which way to go to get to the right planet? So first step is you need to go up. So that's easy. But after that, they need to have uh, special instruments, like a camera, like a very special camera, or, or like a GPS, like we use for navigation. If we need to go somewhere, we put it on, on the app, right? So astronauts usually use those kind of things to figure out their way. But it requires a lot of math to figure it out. You're right. OK. Thank you, Jonathan, for joining us. I think we want to open everyone's mic and you can say thank you to Jonathan. In just one second. Thank you everyone for joining us. See you again tomorrow. Thank you.